Hello and welcome back to the weekly bugger, with the best news we can make up. Again we have some news that never even reached the sensation rags. The past weeks, the news that NASA hit a small asteroid with the DART mission probe was all over the media. This probe was launched by a SpaceX Falcon 10, 9. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Mission. On the way for humanity's first ever planetary defense test mission. And on the September 26, 2022 intentionally crashed into Dimorphos, the minor, 159-meter, planet moon of the asteroid, Didymos. A little longer ago news came out, that the Pentagon finally admits, UFOs are real. Only they call it UAP, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. Observations of events, that cannot scientifically be identified as known natural phenomena. Now you might ask, what's the connection? Well, a few days ago, NASA was very surprised to receive a formal complaint that was delivered in person by a special emissary of the planet Xnort. He parked his space vehicle beside the road outside Kennedy Space Center, and just walked inside. The messenger informed that NASA had damaged the vacation center on Dimorphos. Fortunately no one got hurt. The vacation center functioned as a station for extortion guests, to visit Earth with a rented, highly maneuverable sports dweeble, to admire, the very skilled, Earth jet pilots in Earth's atmosphere. Ted dust cloud, the impact created, makes it impossible to let the dweebles take off to Earth. The people from Xnort are very friendly by nature. And because it was probably an accident, the emissary had no reparation demands whatsoever. He only asked NASA very kindly, to send their space junk elsewhere. Then he even apologized to the American pilots, that is people would not be able to join, and play tag with them for a few months. Then he left the same way he came waving goodbye to the gobstruck NASA employees. Yesterday, was the launch of Bertrand Russell's teapot, from Kennedy Space Center, in Florida. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff of Russell's teapot in route to Jupiter. And with that successful liftoff of our Falcon 9 vehicle, our telemetry nominal, from Space Launch Complex 40, lifting off at 7.32 p.m. Eastern Time. Falcon 9 is supersonic. So with that call, we have Falcon 9 now traveling faster than the speed of sound. Seeing a great shot of the engines on the first stage. Thank you. And that call out there indicating we are po through the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, the highest stresses that the vehicle will feel during ascent. Russell's teapot is an analogy formulated by the philosopher Bertrand Russell who lived from 1872 till 1970 to illustrate that the philosophic burden of proof lies upon a person making empirically unfalsifiable claims rather than shifting the burden of disproof to others. This means, that if someone was to assert, without offering proof, that a teapot, too small to be seen by telescopes, orbits the, the planet Jupiter, he could not expect anyone to believe him solely because his assertion cannot be proven wrong. Russell's teapot is still invoked in discussions concerning the existence of God, and has had influence in various fields and media. The CEO of SpaceX, Elon Musk had a spare Falcon 9 lying around, and concocted this joke with NASA, to actually send a ceramic teapot to an orbit, around Jupiter. NASA suggested, to attach a tiny but working copy of their ion thrust engine to the teapot, as a test for usage of miniaturized thrusters in space. The teapot was donated by Russell's granddaughter who sees that as a tribute to her grandfather. And as usual, the launch was streamed live on YouTube. It is expected that the teapot will reach Jupiter's orbit in six years. 
So now we want to give you an outside view of our brand new studio, where just now, a stealth dweeble from Planet Xnort has parked in front of the entrance, to bring us this amazing footage of Russell's teapot passing the Tesla roaster that Elon Musk launched in 2018 on his Falcon Heavy test flight. We covered its launch in our newscast, of last week. We have edited this together in this video. That was a nice look at the rendezvous. What was that? Was it outside? It seems that a car has crashed into the parked stealth dweeble outside our building. I hope its insurance covers a crash with extraterrestrial space vehicles, if something like that even is possible. A few weeks ago, I sent a sample of my DNA to one of these testing websites and yesterday I got the results. It was more or less what I expected, I am weird anyway, but when I looked at the last one, I really was surprised. How the bleep can I share DNA with Xnort? For goodness sake, that is another planet. I know the people there are ridiculously friendly, but this friendly? Really? It's a shame that I cannot contact my mom, because this is completely nuts. Last week, I noticed a video on the Future Unity channel, one of these fake science channels I did a video about some weeks ago. This one got my attention, because it just might have some truth in it. Let's have a look. Join us as we explore the reasons why NASA shut down the live feeds of the International Space Station. I do need to fast forward the usual rubbish of these channels, to get to the actual point. A live feed from NASA coming from the transmission direct from the International Space Station was cut abruptly after a mysterious object appeared from afar over the horizon in the view of the planet Earth. The live feed was interrupted for 10 to 15 seconds after the object appeared on the screen until the camera came back on. UFO watcher and alien hunter Toby Lund spotted the UFO on the screen looking like a replica of the Starfleet insignia on Star Trek. This model is totally wrong and has nothing to do with Star Trek because I know what it really was, but let's watch the rest. Shortly before the live stream was interrupted, suddenly from the International Space Station by NASA. And this could only mean one thing. Are aliens real? Fast forwarding through all the rubbish again. Speculation came forth surrounding the sighting seen from the space station that the object seen on the camera during the display on the live stream showed that it was probably space debris, as seen in the live stream from the International Space Station and mistaken to be a UFO, and NASA always cuts the feed when a UFO gets close to the space station. This is more like it, the ship is still blurry because it still is over 50 kilometers away. UFO and alien researchers announced that they saw a strange object near the International Space Station during the spacewalk performed by two astronauts, Alexander Gerst and Reed Weiserman. This strange object was later said to be a lens flare from the sun, or it could have been a speck of dust. Weird, isn't it? Possibly a speck of dust, measuring 672 meters long and 228 meters wide? 
I am just guessing. Those reasons were not convincing enough, though, as more conspiracy theories came up from the alien researchers and ufologists standing their ground that the sighting was another proof for them that we humans are not alone in the universe. The problem is that the more NASA denies or explains such things, the more people think there is a conspiracy to hide the truth that aliens are visiting our planet, he added. This all is utter and utter rubbish because this happened on the day I have made this video. Hello there. I am not good with life things so I have recorded this last Friday. That sounds weird. My spaceship, the Dreadnought Class Trident, is currently docked at the International Space Station because my internet died and this is the closest Wi-Fi access point in space. When the ISS crew asked if they could have a peek in the Trident, I told them to knock themselves out. Now they can take a peek how a real spaceship looks on the inside. They probably get lost in there for hours and it gives me the time to record this video. The thing is, I am leaving for vacation tomorrow so I cannot be there in the live stream. Yes I did this on purpose, I am not very good on doing thing life on the internet. The end of season chaos live stream will probably come from the trident because I gave cool and the keys in my absence. I think we did a really good first season the rally bills and, and later premiere Thursday. This also was quite intense. Between Nut and me, we did about 60 videos and that is an awesome number compared to the two per month we made before this. I think we have a great crew and made great friends. So now it is summertime for us up here, but you jars will probably disagree. I wish you all a fun summer. That speck of dust was in fact my spaceship the Trident approaching, I stole it about four years ago and is still in my possession. The docking with the International Space Station went totally automatic to not damage the station. Also because I don't have the money to pay for possible damage. From outside it looked rather silly, but it worked. Yes, NASA lied about this, but it was at my friendly request and possibly seeing the 300 railguns and plasma cannons of the Trident had something to do with it. No worries, without ammunition I cannot use them, even if I wanted, which I do not. Beside, NASA and me are very good friend, I am a valuable shield to them. At the end of the show, I will show you the few missing seconds from that feed. I hope you enjoyed this edition, and I will be here again next Thursday. As many of you have watched life on YouTube, the NASA Artemis 1 space mission has been launched. It lifted off at 1.47, Eastern Daylight Time, on the 16th of November. Here is a short clip of the launch which went flawless and was a really impressive sight. GLS, go for core stage to internal power. The rocket's core stage, which houses the three flight computers, is now on battery power. So there is no more hold time available, because there's no more margin on the battery, so if we hold, have a hold, we'd have to recycle back to T minus 10 minutes and recharge those batteries. What? The count continues. Hey. A note now, shortly after liftoff. I love space videos, and this is my show. One minute. Shortly after liftoff, Mission Control Houston will take control of the rocket, and my colleague, Leah Cheshire, will take over commentary. T minus 50 seconds and counting. Coming up at T minus 33 seconds, the GLS will hand off control to the ALS. This is the autonomous launch sequencer. On board the rocket, it will take over command and control of the rocket. 
but the ALS will check. Make sure there's no holds coming from the ground up until T minus two seconds. Go for ALS. And we are go for ALS. The space launch system is now counting down to lift off of Orion on its maiden voyage to the moon. Launch team can no longer recycle the count. Sound suppressor water now flowing 15. under the ML. And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiated. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. All four RS-25 engines on the core stage and two solid rocket boosters now propelling the vehicle at 128 miles per hour. Hearing good, con good control on the roll from teams in Mission Control Houston. All good calls so far. Now 30 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1. First milestone will be for the vehicle to pass through max Q in about 1 minute and 9 seconds into launch. This is the greatest period of atmospheric force on the rocket. traveling 607 miles per hour. You're looking at 8.8 .8 million pounds of maximum thrust. Quiet here in the loops in mission control. The four core stage engines are throttling down ahead of passing through max Q. traveling at 1,420 miles per hour. The four core stage engines are back at maximum thrust. The next major milestone will be for the solid rocket boosters to cut off and jettison at about two minutes and 11 seconds into the flight, so about 30 seconds from now. Again, quiet here in Mission Control Houston as teams continue monitoring the flight of Artemis 1. We're now 16 miles downrange from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center, traveling over 2,800 miles per hour. Standing by for solid rocket booster jettison and shortly thereafter. This mission is unmanned, and aboard the spacecraft are only dummies in space suits. When I attended the live chat on the M2M YouTube channel, people suggested they could be related to Mannequin Skywalker, the dummy test pilot of Blue Origin. But I had a different idea, I think they are the brothers of the SpaceX Starman. However, there is no way to check that because they are too far away to ask. Or are they? As regular viewers know, we, of the Weekly Bugger have powerful space contacts and they provided us the following footage. I won. As you can see, the SpaceX star man steered his Tesla to briefly rendezvous with the spacecraft to wish his brothers a good trip. As Buster, from the TV show, Mythbusters, would say, it's a small step of man, but a giant leap for crash test dummies. NASA finally has brought out that since May 25 in 2021, when the giant spaceship was observed from the International Space Station, two of its astronauts have gone missing from ISS. They are, Gert Alexander from Germany and, Will Reed from the USA. NASA fears, that they were abducted by the crew of the spaceship that apparently had been docked to the station for several hours. Through our connections, the weekly bugger has obtained a declaration from the captain of the ship. Captain Shizuka, 
who looks vaguely familiar on this archive picture, presented this statement. That the two men are alive and doing very well. They were lost in the 36 decks large interior of the 672 meters long, and 228 meters wide, spaceship, which she called, her trident. The trident is heavily armed with 300 railguns and plasma cannons, has quarters for 1,700 crew members, and automated food dispensers all over the ship. After 42 weeks, they finally found their way and requested to stay on the trident a little longer. After having watched the two sons through the Tannhauser Gate, and visited the Nexus of Sominus, in the Dagoba Galaxy, far far away, they did not want to leave anymore. The captain, permanently assigned them to the Trident because being alone on the ship for so long, she loves the company of the two well-trained astronauts, whose families now spent some wonderful space vacations as guests on the ship. To NASA, Captain Shizuka had the following message. These men work for me now, don't try anything funny, or the Trident will let you sniff its cannons. That was the captain's statement. Well, NASA is quite safe, I know from a reliable source that sniffing the oil of the cannons is all they are good for, since the captain refuses to allow ammunition of any kind aboard the Trident. The Artemis moon mission is still going strong. And on Twitter my friend Conspiracy Slayer posted some pretty amazing pictures. Here are some with the Orion craft and Earth and Moon on the background. However I have noticed something. And I wonder if anyone else have seen this. NASA, when read upside down spells like VSVN. I just wonder what that would mean. But that is a different subject, perhaps for an other time. He compared Humawari satellite images, with pictures taken from the Artemis Orion spacecraft. Here you can see, the weather pattern totally match. That should be the final nail in the coffin of flat Earth. But they all will dash it off as CGI, without even knowing what that is. But that wasn't the only thing, on this picture, there is this tiny dot visible and it is not a UFO, because we know what it is. When enhanced, we can just see that it's Russell's teapot, which was launched five weeks ago, on top of a Falcon 9, on its way to Jupiter. Well this was all for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this show as well as all the others. We really put a lot of work in these videos. Like this weekly bugger, took 14 hours of animating and editing to create. Now we are in desperate need of a better computer, and I really would like to finally get some support through Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Please, you would help us so much for a few dollars per month. So far, for all the begging, I hope to see you again in a week.